with this issue. So uh, without further ado, John, I'm going to turn it over to you right this second. Uh, thanks, Nick, and uh, thanks to everybody for uh, taking the time from your busy schedules to uh, uh, call. Uh, just as a brief, brief uh, first of all, uh, those of everybody that's on the line, uh, make sure that uh, it's possible that you're in a fairly quiet office or you're muting your line so that we don't get too much feedback and everybody can hear fairly uh, clearly. Uh, just briefly, uh, prior to uh, my visit on Tuesday, I just want to go through what we had done. Um, we worked very closely with the NCA starting in late January when I attended the uh, NAFTA meeting, and it was there at the NAFTA meeting we had some conversations with a bunch of ADs um, and the compliance that is it's likely there was going to be some legislation uh, moving forward relative to the issues of the guides. And based on that, uh, Nick and myself, uh, Charles Bloom, uh, Justin Doherty, we met with the NCA on a phone call in early uh, March and kind of developed a strategy at that point in time, which primarily focused on COSIDA uh, being a resource uh, to the recruiting cabinet and other AD associations as they discussed this issue. And over the course of March at basketball tournaments and then the Final Four, uh, we started to compile that PROCON document relative to the benefits of continuing to print, not print, uh, or uh, just print for media information and not include recruiting. We went through that process. Uh, a lot of the conference PR people then discussed those things at their spring meetings, and we continued to refine that document. Uh, we sent it along to the uh, recruiting cabinet in uh, late May. Uh, Dutch Bachman, who was the chair, executive director of the Division I uh, Athletic Directors Association, uh, he heard about the document, and he asked Nick and I to provide it to him. And then he sent it out to all the Division One athletic directors in the country. Uh, several of those ADs were at the meeting on Tuesday, and they mentioned uh, they felt it was very helpful to them and their staff as they reviewed this process. So when I arrived um, in California for the meeting on Tuesday, we primarily focused on two things. Uh, one was just the discussion of the benefits of continuing to print, not print, uh, and we did that, and again, because of the closed con document, we didn't have to spend a whole lot of time there. There was obviously discussion relative to all the different conferences coming forward with different kinds of proposals in terms of uh, completely eliminating them. Pac-10 has recommended, and apparently the Big Ten is going to be doing as well within the next month. And then there was the SEC proposal relative to just uh, printing the guides but not allowing them to be used for recruiting purposes. Uh, we went through uh, that uh, very formal discussion relative to all of that, uh, answered questions as best I could relative to where SIDs feel like quote, traditional news media is heading and all the emerging forms and what is the value of printed material versus completely going online. And, of course, the cost savings issues and the environmental issues were all brought into that equation. Um, to wrap it up very quickly in that regard, Basically, um, board, that board, that cabinet decided uh, to um, endorse the SEC proposal, which was to allow schools to continue to print guide, but not to be used for recruiting purposes. So I, w I want to emphasize they, did, they endorsed that idea, and they specifically wanted to use that word because they want very much the Pac-10, the Big Ten, proposals to kind of continue to go through the pipeline over the course of the next couple of months in terms of, you know, do ADs even feel stronger about the complete elimination of the guides or are the ADs willing to accept the recruiting cabinet's endorsement that we're 10, 000, starting with 10,000, excuse me, 2010 academic year that we would just print those for um, media purposes. So that was it. That was the discussion in that regard. Um, you know, again, uh, a lot, a lot going on there because there's definitely groups out there who feel that the guide should be completely eliminated as a printed material, and that might very well end up being the direction uh, that the AD groups want to go. But from a recruiting cabinet standpoint, they felt comfortable endorsing at this point in time the SEC proposal. At that point in time, um, that's when I really felt like being there was of hopefully benefit to our profession moving forward because the thing that I felt was most important for me being there representing you was to try to make sure that this cabinet and any other groups that we hopefully get a chance to talk to in the future understood that from an SID standpoint, this just wasn't a question of 
printing or not printing. It was a question of if, in fact, we do eliminate guides completely from being printed or we just eliminate them from being used in the recruiting standpoint, then where are things going to go? And where does this group want things to go? Uh, we got into a very philosophical discussion relative to cost containment versus deregulation. By that, I mean, obviously, there, there's a group out there who um, sees this whole discussion relative to cost and would probably very much want to make sure that any legislation that comes forward from the recruiting cabinet keeps that in mind and obviously uh, is aware that if they're not careful, uh, an arms race could clearly develop in the website relative to what gets taken place with recruiting. Uh, there, there's definitely another aspect in that room that came through loud and clear is that there's so much new technology and there's so many new things that we don't even know about that are going to surface here in the next couple months to a year that there was clearly some uh, concern on the part of the recruiting cabinet whether or not they could really clearly define, you know, what is and what isn't going to be um, um, useful and relevant in that regard. So from a standpoint of our organization, I, I stepped forward at that point and just said that, you know, we felt like it was very important that whatever we did do, hopefully they would do something. Otherwise, it would clearly be a full arms race. Uh, but if they did step forward, we felt it was important that they clearly define what schools can do and then as a result, anything that falls outside that falls outside the legislation. That's the intent. Uh, at that point in time, there was, uh, there was uh, a presentation made by a lady from Oregon State who was an associate AD for marketing at Oregon State. Uh, she presented all of the pursuant stuff that many of you have seen that Purdue has done. Very interesting watching the reaction of people in the room. Um, I mentioned to Nick uh, last night when we talked on my way back, uh, Katrina Long from UCLA is the chair of the recruiting cabinet, and she's one of the people who've been in the forefront with the PAC-10 relative to writing legislation or proposing legislation that would be very uh, specific in terms of basically eliminating all this stuff from the recruiting process. Uh, when she saw the Purdue stuff, she really almost changed on the spot relative to her thoughts about that because she was impressed with it. Um, so, again, that gave me another opportunity to talk about, see, this is what we're talking about as an organization. This is what we're talking about as a profession. And as people see a lot of the new technologies, uh, then more people are going to want to do it. But not only are they going to want to do it, but it's just the nature of the business and the nature of coaches and recruiting. Everybody's going to try to get into one-upsmanship. So we spent a lot of time, again, at that point in time, talking about you know, what do the ADs want, what does college athletics want. Does it want cost containment, or does it want to allow schools to just pretty much do whatever they want to do from uh, from a standpoint of, of, of what's on the web. So it, it really is a question of is cost containment only going to be reflective relative to what gets printed, everything else is fair game, or are you going to move forward and make sure that the cost containment is real from the standpoint that those monies don't get transferred into other directions and other ventures. Uh, at that point in time, it was clear that the group was not prepared uh, to make a statement in that regard. They felt like that was something that they needed to continue to talk to all the different groups about. Uh, and I just encourage the group to keep us involved, uh, that uh, what we want to do is, again, be a resource, and we want to try to write legislation that's as tight as possible so that we can answer as many questions up front. Uh, there were there was a question at that point. It was very timely, in my opinion. They asked if we could provide some examples of things in the past that SIDs felt like had gotten out of control because we had not been a part of the process. I specifically then talked about, obviously, what took place about 20 years ago when schools were allowed to do separate recruiting pieces and separate media guides, and when the rule was passed to go to one publication, everybody thought that was a nice move. Uh, but, again, we all knew as SIDs back at that point in time that if we had been asked or, more importantly, we had been proactive and made our thoughts clear, we clearly could have said, well, what's going to happen? Is it the coaches are going to say, well, that's fine. I don't have a specific book, but you just need to put all my information in your media guide. And we knew that was going to happen, and, of course, that's what did happen, and that led to the encyclopedias that we all became familiar with. And then, of course, whatever that was five, six years ago when we did the 208-page limitation. Again, COSIDA did not get proactive. We did not make our thoughts possible or available. 
I think most of most of the people in the profession at that time would have said, you know, the page limitation is great from a standpoint of cutting costs and keeping everything more on equal playing field in terms of publications. But what's likely to happen is coaches are going to, are going to mandate that they get all the same stuff that they normally got and that the books would likely turn into recruiting vehicles. And again, that's because we know that's exactly what's happened, and that's why we are where we are today, and that's why it's in front of this particular cabinet. So that's uh, as quick as I can do it. That's that's an overview. Um, you know, again, just very quickly, what again they've endorsed the SEC proposal, which is to allow schools to continue to print uh, with a with a 208 page limitations, but those books would only be printed or only be used for uh, media purposes could not be provided to uh, recruits. And um, then again, they pretty much at this point in time, because of all of the discussions still going on, still are trying to get their arms around the question of do they want to get actively involved in the discussion relative to preventing an arms race from taking place on the website. Okay, John, thank you. Uh, are there any questions for John relative to, to his report? When you when you ask a question, please do identify yourself so that we know who's on the call. John, this is Roy Pickerel, Kentucky Wesleyan. Can't what is your gut? You? I'm doing just fine, sir. Uh, we know that uh, this will eventually trickle down to Division Two, but what was your, if you were betting, man, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, my my sense is, if I had to put money, I would say that. Uh, at this time next year, there will be no printed guides. For you. Okay. That would, Thank you. that would be my that would be my sense. I think I think the cost containment group uh, will win out. That's just my sense. Um, I hope not, because I personally would like to see them continue to be printed, and I think it'd be a great uh, media friendly decision for the first time in a long time that, that we can get back to putting together something in one document that media uh, would like. But uh, it, my sense will be is things continue to move forward. Um, you know, if somebody brought forward, Roy, and I know you understand this because you're in the publications business, if we still continue to do a 208-page book, uh, you still obviously have the layout design and all the, the prep work. And so maybe, uh, you know, going back, say, to my Florida days, we we were printing 25, 30,000 copies of the media guide. Um, maybe 2,000 of those were being used for recruiting purposes. But we still would have had a huge printing bill, and we still would have had a huge postage bill. I know uh, Nick's boss, uh, Ian McCaw from Baylor, was was part of that group yesterday or Tuesday, and you know he emphasized that one of the things that doesn't get talked about is just the tremendous uh, postage cost uh, relative to all these things. Um, so again, my sense is as time goes along, I think the cost containment group is going to win out. Uh, it might, it may, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll be lucky and get the SEC rule for a year or two. But they're clearly, clearly, within three years, my guess would be at the maximum. Uh, we're not going to have printed guides. It just, it's, uh, it just isn't going to happen. And as you had indicated in your email earlier in the week, uh, it's just a question of time before it trickles down into, uh, into the other division. Did they ask uh, for any? Uh, Input from any media? Uh, there was about a lady. what their thoughts were. Yeah, I mean they were aware that there's been some, uh, you know, recent articles in that regard. Uh, there, there was a lady from uh, Ohio State uh, on the panel, and uh, Ohio State, as everybody now knows, uh, along with Michigan, made a decision to com completely stop printing guides effective immediately. Uh, one of the interesting things about her discussion, with, which I did not know, is Ohio State made this decision, and they're really not saving any money because all of Ohio State's media guides were free. They had they had an arrangement with uh, the Columbus Post Dispatch and I believe Host Communications and a local printer, and basically all of the Ohio State media guides were part of a uh, an overall marketing buy. And so there was no money involved, no savings to Ohio State to do this. Again, they're doing it for environmental reasons and because they believe it's the right thing to do. She said that they spent a good deal of time talking to their media, uh, and that, uh, you know, in an e in, she said, in easily in a 75% range, nobody had any issues with it. So, uh, you know, 
how young that group was, uh, I don't know. She didn't mention that, but uh, it did come on up that uh, obviously many times that uh, a lot of people on that board feels like that's, uh, you know, that's an issue. But obviously with the uh, deterioration of the so-called traditional news media, you get a sense that uh, that's something to think about. But with all the other pros out on the table, the con of upsetting some people in that regard did not seem to really be very significant. John, it's Steve Kirshner in North Carolina. Hey, Steve, how are you today? Good, how are you, John? Um, okay. I had a couple of quick questions. One is, um, in our case, donors, our donors, our scholarship group pays for the books because 75% of our print run goes to our donor base. Um, was there a conversation that in the era of cost containment, when we're asking when we're asking for more private donor um, funding of our programs, like I checked with our donor, um, head of our donor organization, and they said they want to continue paying for those because you know, we're trying to raise $10 million to our donors, so to spend $150,000 on brochures for them, they consider that a good financial investment. Was there any discussion of that? Very briefly, and I, I think, Steve, that's ultimately why the SEC proposal was the one that they endorsed, because they did realize that there are schools out there, like you're talking about, and they were aware that there are other schools that do sell a decent amount of, of those books. So this would enable schools, if, 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 this, if that's ultimately the rule that gets put forward to the membership and that's the one that they approve, then it would allow you to be doing exactly what you're doing because you're still doing what you're doing. All that matters is that it not be used by your coaches from a recruiting standpoint. So the SEC rule would completely allow everybody to do what they're doing from a fundraising standpoint, what they're doing from a retail standpoint. Um, I think it's very important, Steve. One of the things I learned being there is, uh, you know, again, it was great for us, and I fully understood the importance that I was there and I could present our argument. I think it's very important that the uh, development directors, uh, the leadership of the development directors, and you might want to mention that to your folks at UNC, somebody from the development directors needs to charge and do what COSITA has done and can put together a, a document to get to the Division One recruiting captain ASAP uh, why, why the development directors would endorse the SEC proposal because they feel uh, all of the, the reasons that you explained, and they want those to be maintained. Uh, I think that's very important. I think it, I think there's any groups out there who, at this point in time, want to endorse the SEC proposal. Uh, it's important that you get to your, uh, whether it's your ADs, whether it's your uh, compliance directors, whether it's your fundraising groups, whether it's your marketing arms. If, if there's other groups in your athletic department who you feel want to see the printed guide continue to be put forward, then they really need to step up to the plate um, so that uh, that can be in the hopper when the cost containment group obviously is throwing out numbers like you can imagine how many millions of dollars will be saved by not printing guides <coughs> and, the, and, the, and the environmental um, blueprint of all this in terms of saved paper and so on and so forth. So. So the groups that want them, Steve, I just strongly encourage them to uh, step forward and make sure that uh, Katrina Long from UCLA is the chair of that committee and, uh, and uh, that they hear those people's thoughts so, again, that the cost containment people are balanced out a little bit. The other question I had is everybody seems, you know, the hot thing is, you know, Purdue. They talk about what Purdue is doing on their website. And our folks here, including our athletic director, in terms of, of, like you're saying, shifting resources, you know, we're, we're still going to be printing, we're still going to be designing. It doesn't change anything for the people in our offices. You know, short of opening the boxes and carrying them to the, to the press box, you know, we're still going to be designing and writing, you know, and it's just going to be in PDF form. But in terms of the allocation of resources for all of did anybody put a cost? Was there any kind of number thrown out? you know, what people are looking at doing to do what Purdue was doing to make those things come to life, um, sure. you know, adding new people in their new media departments, things like that? Well, uh, the girl from o uh, o uh, Oregon State, again, was the person who presented the Pursuant stuff, and she said that she had talked to both people at Purdue as well as Pursuant. 
Uh, it cost Purdue $80,000 to do those virtual guides just for their Olympic sports. Uh, the entire $80,000 was paid for by one donor. Uh, no athletic department money was used. So I, she did not say whether or not the person who paid for it, were they on the board of directors for pursuing or were they just somebody who liked this. Uh, but she spoke about that. Um, you know, I, I obviously at that point stepped forward again on our behalf and said, well, here's the issue to our group. You know, yeah, there's some issues obviously relative to the time commitment and that's a concern, but I asked her, I said, do you honestly think at Oregon State that you wouldn't try to do something a little bit better? And she said, oh, we've already thought about that. And I said, well, you know, and, and again, I, I, I said, I don't want to be disparaging in any way, but Purdue is in today's ECS world is kind of a, a mid budget program in Oregon State probably is. So I said, you know, if you guys are already thinking about how you can make Purdue one better, can you imagine what the Michigan, the Ohio State, and the Oklahomas and the Texas and, you know, and a lot of the schools in the SEC who have, you know, 70, 80 million dollar budgets, I said, that's what we're concerned about within our profession, that this could just turn into an incredible arms race and you'll be spending a lot more money uh, doing these things than, than if you save some money by, by printing guides. Um, you said 80000 for just the Olympic sports. 80000 just for the Olympic sports, that's correct. Now, oh, supposedly, Pursuant tried to explain the girl, and she tried to explain to the group that that's, quote, set up costs, and that, you know, once you get into the next year, uh, you'll save about a third of that because you already would have paid for some technologies and some other things. So she basically tried to present it that if they did the same thing in year two, it would have been about a $50,000 cost instead of an $80,000 cost. Um, you know, at that point in time, uh, again, Nick's, Nick's boss, uh, Ian McCaw at Baylor, stepped in, and Ian's got some background as an SID, and, you know, he stepped forward saying, again, one of the things that has to be thought about relative to our profession is, uh, you know, maybe, again, we're spending too much time doing game notes and we're spending too much time doing 50-page stat packages and, you know, our people are going to have to start thinking about how they reallocate their time and if these kinds of projects are things that need to be done instead of the other things that we do, those are things that might have to be on the table or things that ADs are going to have to dictate uh, to communications people. And he also mentioned that, you know, most schools now have video departments and, again, that would be a reallocation of what they are doing and what they're expected to do uh, as a way of paying for those things. So, again, there's definitely an element out there who sees what Purdue is doing as the way to go. And, um, you know, again, the only thing we can try to do is balance that from the standpoint of, you know, you might, Purdue might be able to pay for it because of the, Eighty hundred thousand dollars that they're going to save at the printing end, but it, but again, if they allow an attitude to exist where other companies are going to come along and everybody's going to get back into this one-upsmanship, uh, you know, it'll quickly explode very very quickly, and I think we all know that. Watch, folks. Justin Doherty is having a, a difficult time getting into the call, and so um, the question's coming towards John. Uh, and hopefully Justin will be with us in a moment. Nick, I'm on now. On cue, Justin. Um, as I said at the uh, at the top of the call, Justin's uh, school, the University of uh, Wisconsin, is one of the schools nationally. And I believe I've kind of lost track, but uh, last track I had about 50 uh, schools across the country throughout Division One that were either eliminating all printed material going to PDF. Uh, online or some other combination training for selected guides or selected sports, excuse me, um, et cetera. So uh, with that, I will uh, turn it over to Justin, and he can talk a little bit about what they are going to do instead of printing media guides. And one thing I do think that uh, that the SEC proposal would allow us to do, certainly uh, if it were to pass uh, through the pipeline, is it would get, allow the media guide to get back to being what it's really for, because if you can't get them to recruits, the recruiting fluff uh, in so many of our publications uh, would go away. At least I would hope it would go away. And certainly, uh, this proposal would uh, create a little bit more of a compliance nightmare, but uh, that's for those folks uh, to deal with. Justin? Um, thanks, Nick. We had been uh, talking about doing this for um, for several months, actually, and uh, I 
think in some ways it was just a matter of um, having other schools in our conference also do it, and uh, Ohio State and Michigan did, and um, and we were ready to pretty much do the same thing. We um, we met with our coaches. Um, several of them um, uh, were very much in favor of doing this. Others, um, like probably a lot of the schools, uh, there were others that that were um, you know wanted to hold on to the to the printed book and wanted something to leave behind. But um, we are not going to print anything. Um, as far as something to hand to recruits, um, we are going to um, probably probably continue with something we did a couple of years ago, which was sort of a like a a, a records book, like a, a fact book that actually kind of looks like an NFL record book, um, but without pictures and without any really fancy design or anything. And some we've done like up at Kinko's, um, and it's been a true media booklet, it was in compliance, it was something we cleared with our compliance people. So I think we may continue to do that in a really limited basis, maybe with just our local people. Um, and then the rest of it, we will, the rec sort of the recruiting end of it, our plan is to do, um, at this point, sort of the electronic book, um, sort of take the recruiting section or the recruiting aspects of our publications and try and put them online in a in a you know internet book format, um, somewhat similar I think to what Purdue um, has done. Uh, I think ultimately though we probably I, I don't think our staff feels like that's that's our final step. I I, I think the better recruiting oriented um, web material that I've seen are things for example like the DukeBluePlanet.com which is Duke basketball stuff and um, it's heavy video and heavy um, graphics and all kinds of flashy stuff. And um, to me, that's the to me that's kind of the end goal for recruiting uh, stuff. So, um, but I think, like I said, right now we're going to just do the the, the sort of electronic um, booklet. We'll try and embed video in there, and um, uh, you know whatever else we whatever else we can do. But um, that's that's kind of where we're at right now. It's kind of how we came to the the uh, decision, and um, I know our conference has talked about um, um, putting uh, PDFs of all the school's um, uh, media guides on a thumb drive and handing those out at our at our football media day this summer, which I think is a really great idea. Um, you know, I, I think that would eliminate the need for people to have to carry around all the big books and so on, but um, anyway, that's, that's kind of the synopsis of what we're what we're uh, what we're doing, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions if, if anybody has any. Uh, Justin, just to uh, I did want to throw out one thing before uh, folks direct questions at you. I did talk yesterday uh, at great length with uh, Ted Ganji uh, from PressBox.com, and you know obviously works very close with football writers. And um, Ted is going to attempt uh, this summer certainly for football writers membership. Uh, for their members uh, to port all 119 Division One A guides uh, on CDs or flash drives or something, and give it to their members to uh, to make it easier for their members. So um, that is a project that uh, Ted is going to undertake and uh, feels very strongly. He has a sponsor uh, and believes he can pull that off. And I'm sure that the media uh, would certainly appreciate. Uh, having that at their uh, disposal. Well, yeah, and, and I think you know that can be done so efficiently and so um, quickly and so inexpensively. You know, as far as a, you know, not needing to print, not needing to mail, um, and so on. I, I just it just seems to make a lot of sense to me right now. Questions for Justin, myself, John. Feedback. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, what do you want us to do as an organization? Um, you know, we're here to help. This is uh, kind of a new facade, um, and certainly we have been involved in this issue from the front end, and uh, we want to continue to be. So um, that's why we're having this call today, and, and we want to hear from you guys. So feel free to speak up, please. Hey, this is Bernie from Notre Dame. Hi, Bernie. Hey, how's it going to everybody? Uh, a quick question about. 
Um, you know, with regards to what, you know, the Big Ten is looking to do, giving these, you know, the thumb drives with everyone's needy guides and what Ted, Ga um, Ted Gange is going to do, what about the, you know, the ABCs, the CBSs, the ESPNs, like the researchers there who are back in the studio on Saturday afternoons, how are maybe we going to help them out to be able, you know, to do their job? Has there been any thought to that? Okay, this is Justin. What, that's, that's probably the one thing that we've struggled over is the call from ABC or ESPN where they say, you know, give us, ship us 12, 12 media guides and your clips and all that stuff. And um, I, I think we've actually, at least for football probably and possibly for men's basketball, we've considered um, the record book that I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, we've considered making enough of those so that we could satisfy those requests. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I find it hard to believe, but I, but I don't know for sure that um, the researchers at ESPN can't just go onto the internet just as easily. But um, you know, when you've got, you know, if, if you know. I, I don't know that everybody's got that capability yet. So. Yeah, right. I know that. I just, you know how sometimes when they're on deadline, I mean, you know, you always get a call, like, at the, as the game is ending, you know, since our game is NBC, you know, we frequently get calls from ABC just kind of fact-checking something, you know, and just to, I just, you know, that's an entity that we need to consider. Yep. Yep. No, no question. And like I said, that's probably been the one thing that we've, if there's any hook that's kind of held us back a little bit in terms of just going completely that direction, that that might be one that we're still trying to trying to figure out. This is Wallace Dooley, Tennessee State. Uh, I tend to fall in between on a whole lot of stuff. Uh, we're we're just a, a struggling uh, FCS school, and we're also an HBCU. And you know, my background is history, and I'm I mean a lot of stuff that I have been able to find and, and have, have seen problem with with uh, getting information is historical stuff. Uh, all of our electronic stuff, all that's well and good until you have a hard drive crash or you have one of your uh, 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 servers crash. You know, uh, I, I really think that we still need to, you know, I mean, send out the media, I think, is the thing, and then stop it for uh, for recruiting. But, I mean, we they need to be hard copied somewhere, someplace. I do think that, you you know, there's nothing preventing us, preventing any of us from printing out the documents that we have and preserving them in some fashion, whether it's a three-ring binder or spiral bind them or, or, or whatever. But there's nothing that prevents us all, you know, any of us from printing any of this out and keeping hard copies of it for our own archival purposes. This is Josh Selling College at Charleston. Uh, I don't know if this is something that is possible, but with what's going on with technology, uh, with Ted Gange, is it something where there's a possibility he can find a cheap way to download a media guide onto just a single-use device where that can be produced with that content on it instead of the printed guide? I don't know if that's something that's possible, but it might serve the purpose. I will pass that along to him. Other questions or thoughts? Uh, this is John Akers um, from Basketball Times, and uh, thank you guys for letting me listen in on this. From, I'm also representing the USBWA. Um, has there been any consideration at all to, like, maybe a pocket-sized guide? Is is even a transitional phase into all this, um, which to me would seem to, you know, at least be a compromise solution uh, for now. I'm just Nick, not. Not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, again, I think that certainly I don't think it's – the schools doing it now are doing it on their own and making that decision. So, I mean, I, I don't think there's – I know the Pac-10 has to maybe fast-track this legislation yet this year, but I think we're, we're getting too far down the road. So, for most places, there probably won't be a change for, for this year unless, again, like Wisconsin and Ohio State, you've decided to you're going to do that institutionally. So, again, now, if the SEC proposal passes, you could do whatever you wanted and lose the recruiting bills and become uh, much more media friendly. This is Mark Price from the University of Miami. 
can you or can someone send out the proposals that the Pac-10, the Big Ten, and the SEC have? I've not ever seen those. Uh, we'll try to get them posted on on Koshida dot com or That'd blast, be great. blast them out. Be great. So, Thank you. Hey guys, it's Tim Meltzer with the Mountain West Conference. Hey Tim. Hey, um, would it also be possible to get a copy of that uh, pro-con document that you were talking about earlier? Uh, yes, that's, that's your call. Yeah, we'll post it on Cosida.com. Okay, I was going to say that would, that would come in very handy for those of us that are going to be meeting with our SIDs in our media days in the next few weeks. Yeah, uh, Tim, uh, Devin should have gotten a copy of that already. He, he from, may, no, he's out of the office this week, so... Oh, he, he would have gotten this. He would have gotten this. Uh, oh, probably a month and a half ago. Okay. Uh, it, it, it went to it went to John Paquette, and then Nick and I asked John to distribute it to okay. all the uh, PR directors for the Division One institutions. So we went out that way. Plus, uh, Charles Bloom has a representative from every one of the conferences uh, that make up Division One A on the University Division Management Advisory Committee. Charles sent that to each of those representatives. Uh, you know, Charles, I don't know if you know off the top of your head who the representative is for the Mountain uh, West, but that person was also asked that to distribute it within the conference. Okay. So, I don't um, think that's gone out wide, though, John. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll get it posted on Cosida.com. I'll, I'll give it to Jamie, and when he posts, uh, he's taping this call. I'm going to post it for playback, so uh, we'll go ahead and get that posted as well. Great. John, John, this is Steve. Well, um, my Kirshner, one of one of my concerns as we move forward, I think that we kind of like, kind of globally, we got to look at this as, you know, I think we got to be really careful about where our our profession goes from here, um, because this is it, it is a monetary issue. I mean, the, you know, all the environmental concerns, those were great, but nobody was really talking about that widespread until the economy tanked in the fall. Um, and everyone around here, our, our league that's talking about it, is looking purely at it from a financial standpoint. Well, these resources are going to be spent in other ways, and if we're doing things um, as much as we are with the video and the new media, there's no question. I mean, I forget if, if it was Justin, you know, the Duke Blue, uh, Blue Planet stuff. That is where people are going, and that's where our coaches want to go, and, um, and as we spend money in those resources, I have a great concern that, as positions become available, you know, your ADs are going to say, well, I don't know if you need to fill that position in communications or sports information because, you know, the video department needs another person to work on the graphics and the video. And so we're, you know, we're training our SIDs here um, to do more podcasting and, and to, you know, buy an HD DVR camera to go out and do the interviews themselves and put them on our site ourselves because, our new media people, they can't get to everything. So I think as an industry, we've got to be very careful about how our younger people are trained because we're going to lose spots to the video departments and places like that. Well, I, you know, again, I, I, think that's, I think that was a big reason why Nick and I uh, and the board worked so hard to try to get in front of this group was because, again, we were to say exactly what you're saying, Steve. This, this is not an issue to our industry in our profession and our people, it's about a printed guide or not a printed guide and whether it can be used for recruiting or not. It's a much bigger issue than that. Uh, and, and, you know, one side, if, if you if you don't go the direction that you're talking about, then there's obviously people in our profession that are very concerned that they're going to be the ones that end up doing all the work sure. relative to whatever it is that gets done on the web. And, again, if that's not controlled, obviously that can get way out of hand. And then, obviously, there's the point that you talked about that if you – if, as an SID or communications director, you try to run a fairly traditional operation, then you might very well have a new AJD who says, you know, again, I don't want those things. And and uh, so we're going to, you know, like you said, we're going to take some of your staff and either the new person that you hire is going to be able to do all these things or if the new person you hire doesn't want to do those things or isn't capable of doing those things, well, then we're going to go reallocate those those, those money. So, yeah, I think that's all on the table, Steve. And, uh, you know, clearly, again, having been there, um, uh, I, I think by the end of the day, there were a lot more questions than there were at the start of the day. I think I think we said enough things 
cause them to look at some things with a lot more questions with no answers, uh, that that's why they decided in many ways to kind of see uh, where we're going to go again with this issue of cost containment versus versus uh, trying to control uh, the arms race. So that group makes up their mind what direction they're going to recommend, and that is, you know, we, we are going to watch cost containment, so we really are going to get involved in dictating what schools can and can't do. Uh, obviously, that would be best for us, but if they, they decide to kind of wipe their hands clean, basically say it's a free-for-all, uh, then you then you got to hope at that point in time that the AD's groups step in and say, no, we're not going to allow this to happen. This is Richard in Washington. Hey, Richard. I want to say, um, Curtis has hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's no question that what he said is what we're going. The only observation I'd like to make is I appreciate the fact that you're trying to help us find the middle ground and then taking a hard line approach to saying no to something that so many people on. I think that's a positive step for society and, and something that's a positive step for our profession. Thank you, Richard. That really was a key. Uh, that really was a key strategy decision in March uh, when Nick and I and Justin and Charles got together with the NCAA that uh, it was very clear that um, based on the past in terms of how we handled or not handled some things, it's usually been uh, our insistence on trying to uh, come to some kind of consensus like we did on the 208-page issue, and it's clear that you can't. It's too big of an issue and it's too complicated, and everybody sits at a different desk in a different chair. So. You know, we made a very key strategic decision at that point just to concentrate on we want to be a resource and we want to be a pro and a con. And, and what I said to this group on Tuesday was, again, we want to be a part of reviewing the legislation, give us a chance uh, to, again, shoot holes in that, give us a chance to come back to you with what we see as the pros and the cons. And, uh, we, you know, as a board, there's, there's really been some key things that have been done that, most people don't quite understand, but we, we put a whole new management tier into Cosida last summer with the University Division Management Committee and, and the College Division Management Committee. That has enabled us to really mobilize uh, in a very quick way, where in the past we haven't been able to do that. So I uh, just want to commend uh, Nick and Charles for getting that off the ground, and it uh, really has been uh, very crucial for us in terms of how we've handled the past couple months. And, Hopefully here in the next two or three months if we get a chance to do things in terms of surveys and pros and cons again, then we're going to be able to use that, that new management structure to get some answers to some things a lot quicker than we've been able to in the past. I think that there are, you know, an, a concern or at least an observation that I've had in, in the discussions with our IT person, too, is that, you know, again, if there are no limitations on what you do on the web, um, that a lot of these, you know, we, we started out with PDFs now, that are somewhat user friendly, but they're eventually going, and they are already morphing into something else that I think is becoming much less user friendly if you really needed information. And and that um, after the first time you go there, whatever special effect is on there, uh, people walking out from a green screen, or becomes less exciting to you the next time you have to go up and use the information. And and then on top, and in, in addition, I think you have to take in, into account that. Um, Again, all computers really uh, aren't, aren't equal, and what you can do on, and what I'm looking at on my screen might not be the same. So uh, I guess those are all problems that we're going to have to solve. But I think, uh, at least in the early going, if we do away completely with media guides and rely totally on the web, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that all evolves. Where are the coaches in all this? Um, I mean, like you said, some, some are in favor of it, some are against. Have any coaches groups been given a chance to weigh in, I'd be curious to what they're thinking in terms of how it affects their recruiting. This is Barb Crossman with the University of Michigan. Um, and you may be aware that we in Ohio State announced that we're cutting the printing of our guides. And so we've gotten some feedback from coaches, obviously. And their obvious number one concern is that they have nothing to leave with a recruit when they go on home visits. And so it's, you know, a lot of it is if you're going strictly to the web, then you better make sure that what's on the web works and looks good. Um, but that's, you know, it's, it's all about recruiting. That's what they care about. They don't necessarily care about what the media are getting, even though we need to suit both purposes. Coaches in recruiting, uh, and I think it would vary, uh, generally speaking, too, they're committing earlier and earlier in the process 
they may not even have a media guide in their hand be committed to wherever they want to go play the sport at. So you guys, as commitments happen earlier and earlier, really less and less of a and uh, giving stuff to leave the home. Hi, this is Bernie from Notre Dame again. Um, we've kind of had that discussion with the coaches here in Notre Dame, and I think, you know, if you had to poll the coaches who were most concerned about it, it would be the Olympic sport coaches. Agreed. That, that they, they were more concerned about not being able to leave something, you know, the footballs, the men and women's basketballs, you know, ho some hockey schools, you know, baseball schools, depending on the magnitude of their the sport at each school, maybe not have as much of a concern as maybe our rowing coach here at Notre Dame. Like, he was very adamant about that he still would want some type of printed guide to leave on at the hands of the recruits when they're allowed to start recruiting, you know, those seniors to be juniors on July 1st. Bernie, again, from my perspective, I, I think you know, we've got to be pretty honest. You've got to be pretty honest with that coach, um, whether they like it or not. The best that we can hope for right now is that the SEC proposal passes, which is going to allow, again, schools to print something but not to provide it to recruits. Right. It's either that's the alternative or the alternative is, is to completely eliminate them from being printed, period. So whether the I think our coaches, are, uh, our coaches are well aware of that, that that's, could be the um, direction that everything had de heads down, but if you ask them in the perfect world what they would want, they would still want to leave that printed media guide. It it's more imperative for the old Olympic sport coaches rather than some of, you know, with the bigger sports. Well, again, having having been in that room on Tuesday, unless there's unless the, that group gets convinced by the coaches or unless the ads. Um, get away from their cost containment issues, that's got no chance to pass. It's got no chance. The, the guides are going to be eliminated from the recruiting process. That's, that was the clear signal in that room on Tuesday. There will be no printed materials to give recruits. Everything will move online. And, and, and then again, then the question moves into the area that I talked yeah. about is how, how do we try to protect our profession and its people right. relative to that move. But uh, I would I would say, Bernie, the chances come next August that, that any coach is going to have any printed material to leave with a recruit are 99.99999. Hey, John, this is Mark Frey again. Is, does this mean that there's going to be, this is going to evolve into a recruiting thing online along with a media guide? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it means. That's exactly what it means. Is schools, uh, if the SEC rule passes, schools can do a printed guide, and all recruiting will move online. And if the uh, if the uh, Pac-10 and the Big Ten and other conferences move forward with their proposals, and that's what the membership votes to approve, then there will be no printed materials for for the media or uh, for recruits. And uh, other than other than again enabling uh, enabling either of those groups, parents, recruits, high school coaches, media, obviously there will be some form where they can click on and print print off whatever it is they want to print off. But those are the two alternatives. John, this is uh, Paul from Oakland University. Hey, Paul. Uh, one of the questions I have is, if, if the uh, if SEC model is not adopted, where would we stop? If, if, if from my standpoint and looking at it from from Oakland's standpoint, I mean, obviously, you know, we need to have our, our record and that sort of thing, and it's, and it's nice to have the hard copy, as everybody's mentioned before. But at, at the point where we say, okay, we're not going to be able to print media guides of any consequence, where does it stop? I mean, is this something that's going to eventually go to game notes because? You know, somebody may decide, well, hey, if we can't give a media guide out, maybe we can give out notes. I mean, at, at what point do you think this stops? I, I don't know, you know, Paul. I, I think right now, uh, and I'll, I'll refer back to Nick on this, but he, he had mentioned uh, when we started uh, to go through this topic and he had attended a Big 12 meeting, he made reference to the fact that, that there was a, a point made in the room 
uh, by an athletic director in that league. It's a media guide to, quote, easy picking. Tease them. Everybody knows how much money is invested in the printing of them and, and, and now the cost containment aspect of that as well as the environmental issues. So as Nick said, there, there's a feeling on the part of the ADs right now that it's just very easy picking. And so I've not heard any talk relative to the other things. Uh, I don't think at this point in time, you know, we can get, we can think that far ahead. I think we've got to concentrate on, you know, um, again, where things are. And from our standpoint, um, there's a clear, there seems to be a pretty clear feeling that, you know, at least in the short term, we would like to be able to provide um, printed materials to, to the media or however we determine that. But the biggest part of the equation is, is what many of you refer to is we've got to watch what happens relative to all of the efforts being moved towards the web as it relates to recruiting and, again, what's the impact on SIDs and what's the impact on our, on our profession relative to that big, that big issue. Uh, that's much, much bigger right now, I think, Paul, than you know, what might happen two or three or four years down the line relative to will there be any kind of an AD movement to, you know, say, hey, get rid of, you know, get rid of uh, uh, notes on press row. I have no idea. I just don't think we can think that small at this point in time. I do think that one thing to follow up with is what John said, that would move us all as we go to our conference tournaments this year we cut back on what we, we take and uh, because uh, a couple of Big 12 ADs were in the room and they saw this table there the second day full of stuff and 18 had gone home and it's, you know, just waste. And so, you know, you can look at all the numbers of what we're doing uh, to conference tournaments, to the NCAA tournament. I know what they say to bring print out my my originals of things and run out, copy more, be more effective than what we're doing right now because there's a lot of waste. I think we would all agree on that part. When uh, when I attended the uh, consignum meeting in Detroit at the Final Four, uh, that was one of the things that I talked to the group about was, was uh, you know, again, as we all know, we have a tendency in our business to kind of do a lot of things because other schools do things. And, uh, and unfortunately, that's drifted into things like how many pages your press notes are and other things like that. And I encourage that group that I felt based on my conversations, particularly with the Division One Athletic Directors Association, uh, that, that you know we can we can take charge of some of these things. You know, as as a conference, you can make determinations about about like Nick is saying, what do you get done at a conference tournament? Do you, if you can make decisions about how many pages you have in your press notes or eliminating guides for the tournament. And I know John and the consignment group has already met with the NCAA that, you know, in this day and age to ask schools to send 750, 1,000 copies of their media guide to the Final Four, uh, there's just boatloads of that stuff that doesn't get used anymore. So it's a waste. And I think that's one of the things, you know, that ATs are looking at us from a standpoint or are we going to evaluate our own profession and what we do and start eliminating waste and start eliminating doing a bunch of things that maybe have gotten out of control because of ourselves, not because of coaches, not because of ADs, but because of ourselves. That's another topic for another day, but there's, there's clearly things that conferences can do within their conference or the conference groups can get together and make determinations about how they're going to handle certain things so that people just do good job with all the basics and not have to worry about one upsmanship. Hey, John, it's Mike Pearson. Hey, Mike, how are you, partner? I'm terrific. How are you? Good. I, uh, I uh, saw Coach Izzo uh, at the V Foundation function in uh, Sarasota a couple weeks ago. I went up and introduced myself to him, and he apologized that I got to know you so well over the years. So <laughs> <I ain't there. laughs> don't, uh, now don't, don't go too far with it. Hey, I, I, I just want to make sure I'm hearing the same message. Right now, online does not uh, have any restrictions in terms of size, in terms of color, in terms of interactivity. Is that correct? And pages. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, right now, Mike, there, there's, there's nothing on the table that's going to change anything for the upcoming year. Okay, so what, you, what you've done, you continue to do. 
everything that's on the table in 2011 year. Our, our guides going to be allowed to be printed but only used for media purposes, or are they going to be completely eliminated from being printed, period? So I don't know what, um, you know, I don't know what, what the legal aspects of things are, but it's always been my thought that whatever schools currently do in a printed vision, you can put that up on a PDF. So if your printed visions, obvious versions, don't have color in them, I'm not sure you're permitted to put that guide up on online with a color format. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody else would have a better thought on that. Yeah, that was my my question uh, referred to, uh, specifically to online. Yeah, I think this is Bernie from Notre Dame. I think your online version can be in color. I've seen a lot of schools do that, but they at the when they print it, it's obviously just the black and white. But your PDF version is in color. Mike, this is Justin. Um, I would just throw this out there too. Our compliance officer tells me, and I'll just read this for this real quick here. She says, bottom line, if we call it a media guide or recruiting brochure. It would have to meet the restrictions under NCAA rules for athletic publications, i.e., one color of print inside the cover and may not exceed 8.5 by 11, 208 pages in length. If we make it general informational content and call it something other than a media guide or recruiting brochure, we can use color throughout the web product. I realize that's splitting hairs, but it's, it is a, it's the interpretation she gave me. Okay. I don't have that many hairs to split, so I'll believe you. <laughs> So, so, Justin, you're saying if it was called the 2009 Wisconsin Information Guide instead of Media Guide or Recruiting Guide, then you could you could do what Mike is suggesting. According to our compliance person, yes. Okay. Yep. There you go, Mike. Thank you, guys. But I'd ask your own compliance person. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Good idea. And that's the thing going forward that, you know, all these are great. It's, it's kind of like the, the NBA you know, draft rules, the early age rules, it's all these unintended consequences of these these changes because the technology is changing so quickly. We're all competitive. We're all trying to beat each other for recruits and everything else. I mean, let's, let's be honest. And, you know, the, when we went to 208 pages, some schools got around that. You know, they, they made a 300-page spring football game program, and they did that. And other schools printed a second media guide, and even though the NCA said not to, they did. Um, so everybody's going to look for an advantage, a way to get around this. And with the technology being so fast and changing, these are these changes are going to have massive unintended consequences. If the issue is cost containment, I think it needs to be made clear to the athletic directors that this money is not leaving the media guides. It's it's just going to another place, and that's to the web. No question. Twenty-five years ago, John, they what cut color in the media guides because the smaller schools said the bigger schools are spending too much money. We can't compete. Then it was one color stationary. Then it was size of the brochures. It's just going to transfer because it's always going to be that way. I, I see as plain and simple as I can. That's that's the heartbeat of what I tried to get across uh, yep. yesterday and or Tuesday and again that. You know, we appreciate the opportunity to be brought into that meeting. It was it's the first time COSITE has ever sat in on a cabinet meeting. It's the first time we've ever had a chance to be a part of a process before a proposal was put into a written format. So, uh, you know, hopefully they'll they'll uh, continue to want to have us involved in the process and we can continue to try to find this uh, the best we can. But there's no question the big decision out there now is the ADs relative to how determined are they relative to cost containment. And if cost containment is primarily being viewed from their standpoint of let's just eliminate the stuff that we can see all this paper and, and they allow it to, to, to go into another direction without uh, allowing the recruiting cabinet to uh, put their arms around it and, and do some of the things that you and others are talking about, then whatever cost savings any school will, will save will get eaten up ten times over very quickly. Um, but if uh, you know, but if they you know if they understand and they're really committed to cost containment, uh, then that's to our benefit. That's the way I look at it. It might be a negative in terms of whatever does or doesn't happen to printed guides uh, in the short term. 
That's really, like you said, that's a secondary issue. Absolutely, absolutely. The main issue is how how really dedicated are they to cost containment, and if it's just, as Nick said, uh, it's easy pickings, and that money gets transferred over into these other areas, it gets eaten up so quickly. And, uh, and again, we all know there's there's other firms right out there today, I'm sure, who have seen what Pursuant's done with Purdue, and they're going to come back with something a month from now or two months from now that's, you know, a couple degrees above, and, and it's going to cost more, and people are going to jump aboard. So it's really going to be interesting to see uh, what the ABs do in terms of how really committed they are to this to the cost containment issue. Okay. Okay, anything else for this call? Those of you who stayed with us the whole time, thank you. We appreciate it greatly. We hope we'll see all of you in uh Thanks, guys. Thank you guys for doing it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.